In this video, I thought I would take a deep dive into the smell of rain, work out exactly what makes it up, and then go and try to recreate it myself using all of the different tools in the perfumer's palette. So if you're interested in learning a bit about what causes the smell of rain and then watching me try to recreate it, definitely watch to the end of this video. This video is sponsored by Luxeterra, my online store where you can find all of the essential equipment for perfumery. Only good quality and good value for money products make the cut and I use almost all of the products myself when making perfumes for my brand. To browse the full range of products, visit www.lux-terra.co.uk or click the link in the description. So then, the smell of rain. If you've looked up the smell of rain on the internet, you've probably come across the term petrichor. Now, petrichor is commonly used to refer to the smell of rain. However, the term first came about in a research paper released in 1964. The paper was The Nature of Argillaceous Odor. Yes, that's quite a bit of a mouthful. And it was published in Nature, one of the top scientific journals. So that's where the term petrichor was coined. It comes from the Greek petra, meaning stone, and ichor, meaning eternal essence. So if you put those together, you get petrichor, essentially the eternal essence of the earth or the stone. And this is because the idea of the paper was they were specifically looking at the smell that you get when you heat something like clay or rock with warm air for a few days. So say it's been out, just left in nature and you've got some warm air and it seems like the clay or the stone slowly builds up this smell and then when it rains or when it's moistened as they say in the paper, suddenly that smell is released into the atmosphere. And what they were specifically trying to do in this paper is distinguish the smell that comes from the rocks as opposed to any other smell, for example, smells that might be made by microorganisms living on the rocks or things like that. Now, a very important part of the smell of petrichor is geosmin, which is produced by microorganisms, and we'll talk about that just a little bit later. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit more about that paper, because it does talk about the smell of the rocks, and that smell is also an important component of petrichor. So essentially what they did in their experiments were they took a wide variety of rocks, including even some radioactive rocks, and they went and heated them up to 600 degrees Celsius, and this was to get rid of any microorganisms living on the rocks. So they knew they just had the rock itself. And then they went and left them outside, but protected from the rain. And they did this from a period of a month to a year. And what they did was essentially let this uh, kind of petrichor, as they call it, build up on the rocks. And then they went and steam distilled it. So that's a process you often use in perfumery to extract the essence out of uh, different plants. But they actually went and did it this time on the rocks to try to obtain um, an oil or something of smell from those rocks. And then they went and analyzed what was inside that. So essentially they're taking um, a chemical analysis of the components that are kind of uh, building up on the rocks that would have been uh, released normally when the rain goes and hits them. And this is similar to the Mitti Attar that they create in India. You may have seen a YouTube video if you search for the smell of rain where they go and create this Mitti Attar. What they do is they go and distill a load of clay with some sandalwood at a certain place in India to create this special kind of perfume, which is also uh, what they say is essentially the smell of rain. So it's interesting that distilling uh, clay and rock seems to yield some kind of smell that's related to the smell of rain. Anyway, what the scientists found was that the resulting oil actually contained a wide variety of different components. So one of those was elemental sulfur. So that's literally the element sulfur, which you find in the periodic table. And that has a very strong characteristic kind of um, disgusting or eggy kind of sulfur smell. Then, as well as that, they found a lot of different organic components. So uh, these are things like carboxylic acids. They also went and found some cyclic bases, things like pyridine and quinoline, and then a lot of other things as well. Now, if you don't understand the different chemistry and what these molecules all are, it doesn't really matter because the main point here is there's a big soup of different molecules and that means it's very complicated. And aside from that, there's also a lot of molecules that are not usually found in the perfumer's kind of palette or the different raw materials a perfumer would work with. And that makes it problematic when you're trying to recreate the smell of rain because it means a lot of the things which are actually in the smell of rain, we don't necessarily have access to. So that's something to bear in mind for later. But anyway, the conclusion of that paper was that essentially this smell found in the rocks, well, it can't have been caused by the microorganisms since they were already wiped out by the heat treatment those rocks got at the start of the experiment. And also some of the rocks were even radioactive and that would have killed the microorganisms, but they still had the smell. 
So the scientists thought that smell must have been mostly compounds from the air adsorbing to, that means sticking to the surface of the rocks over time, and potentially even reactions occurring on the surface of the rocks involving those compounds to create new ones. So then, that's what the term petrichor was originally meant to mean. That smell caused by the hot air um, leaving those compounds on the rocks, so a kind of smell innate to the rocks. But in popular culture over the time, it seems that the term has evolved in its use and is now used by most people just in general to refer to the smell of rain. So that's the first component of petrichor then, the smell of rocks. But if we go and include the modern definition where we include the whole smell of rain, there are also some other components. So for example, one of those is ozone is sometimes present. That's that kind of uh, sharp, fresh, airy smell you may sometimes smell, and it's produced before thunderstorms. So sometimes, especially before rain actually comes, you can smell a bit of ozone in the air. Now, another one, probably the most famous part of petrichor, is geosmin. So geosmin is a smell that's naturally produced by bacteria living in the soil, but it's also found in some other places like beetroot and some fish. So geosmin, because it's primarily responsible for the smell of rain, is something that we often can like the smell of, that kind of earthy smell. You'll know the smell if you go and smell the soil. But at the same time, if we accidentally taste it, then we think it's disgusting, it tastes like dirt. And that's because it also is present in spoiled food because it's created by those same bacteria. Now humans are extremely sensitive to geosmin and we can actually detect it at 0.4 parts per billion in the air. That means if you had a room full of air molecules and for every billion molecules of air there was only one molecule of geosmin, then we would still be able to detect it. So we are super sensitive to this smell. As well as geosmin, there are also other molecules which are present in the air. So a lot of plants give off volatile compounds and a lot of these are terpenes for example. So when it rains, a lot of these compounds also become a lot more present and we notice these a lot more too. So the smell of rain really is a big mixture of things. It's both the smell of the rocks, the smell of geosmin, potentially some ozone, and then other volatile compounds, especially those released by plants, which may already be present in the air. And on top of this, you can imagine, depending on where you are, the smell of the rain actually changes because these components can actually differ. For example, you may or may not have so much ozone depending on if there's a thunderstorm, and you may have more or less geosmin or different smells in the rocks or from the plants, depending on which rocks or plants are actually in the surroundings. So what I'm trying to say here is, the smell of rain is actually really very complex and variable. So essentially for a perfumer to recreate the smell, it's a little bit of a nightmare. Anyway, about these smells that are already present, like these volatile compounds, you might be asking, well, surely if they're already present, why can't I smell them? And maybe the same for the petrichor and the geosmin in the soil. Surely if it's already there, why does it only come about that I can smell it when it rains? Well, another research paper was actually done looking at this topic. So what they did was they took lots of really slow motion, up close videos of rain droplets landing on surfaces. And I'll put a link to those so you can watch them yourself. But what they found was when a raindrop hits the surface, well firstly what it does is it traps little air bubbles and anything that's already on the surface beneath it. And then all of those compounds which have adsorbed to the surface of the rock or the soil, well firstly those get dissolved into the rain droplet. And then secondly, all of these little air bubbles, the trapped air, well they need to escape because air is lighter than water. So what they do is they rise up in a little micro bubble inside the droplet to escape. And when they uh, reach the surface of the rain droplet that's landed, they actually kind of burst outwards. And in doing so, they create almost like a splash on the surface of the rain droplet. And that kind of creates these micro, even tinier droplets than the rain droplets themselves that go and kind of burst out into the air. So when the rain droplets landing, you're creating all these tiny little particles of the water, and these are called aerosols. And because the petrichor and whatever's on the surface of the soil, or maybe even the leaf of the plant, is also dissolved into the liquid of the droplet, well, when these tiny micro droplets get released out of the top, they bring with them some of that dissolved material. And then when you have all of these kind of aerosols, you could think of them as a super fine mist in the air. Well, because they're little spheres essentially containing dissolved smells, 
and spheres have a very high surface area, that means they start to evaporate off super quickly. So essentially this whole process of raining, it releases this mist which then quickly evaporates all of these smells into the air. So suddenly in the air you have a much higher concentration of all these smells that you would normally have just kind of stuck to the soil, the leaves, the rocks, whatever. So this is why we smell things more intensely in the rain, because you've got all of this kind of, this spray, this aerosols which are transporting the smells. And you know this because when you go and spray a perfume, that's exactly the same process, you're creating an aerosol. And this is one of the reasons that perfumes smell so strongly when you go and spray them, because this hyperfine mist actually allows the perfume to kind of evaporate and reach your nose better. So then, we got quite technical there, but this is generally what I try to do when I'm researching how to go and make an accord in perfumery. I really want to know all of the information there is to know about how, well, what's inside the smell that I want to make, so I know how I might go about trying to put different things together, what components I might need to go and start reproducing that in terms of a perfume or an accord. So from the research on the rain, what we firstly realized is, well, there are some things like elemental sulfur and a lot of random organic compounds that are in rain that are highly variable that we're just not really going to be able to reproduce accurately. Maybe the most uh, reasonable or accurate way of getting some of these would be simply doing that kind of mitty attar method of actually going and distilling the clay. But I don't have access to that. So all we can do is try to reconstitute it from what else we can find. So what we found was there is ozone sometimes. So we can uh, look to some kind of ozonic smells that we might be able to get in perfumery. Then we've got geosmin and potentially some other earthy smells. So I've got a category of earthy raw materials, so we can go and look through those. Then also there are the kind of terpenes and those volatile organic components. And a lot of these are used sometimes in perfumery. So we can go look through those and try to pick out some that might be appropriate. So what I did was I went through my list of, uh, or my kind of library of perfume raw materials, and I had a look and I found some ideas to things we might be able to use in our rain accord. So firstly, looking at the earthy category, well, of course, there is geosmin, and this is something you can actually purchase for use in perfumery. So of course, this was going to be a big component of the accord. Now, the thing about geosmin is because we're so hypersensitive to it, it actually means that at higher concentrations, for example, if you had a pure bottle of geosmin, it's so overwhelmingly powerful that your nose kind of almost cuts out at being able to detect it properly. It kind of completely overwhelms your receptors. So an important part of using geosmin in the cord was actually finding a good dilution to use it at. So the stock geosmin that I'd bought was already diluted down to 1%. But at that concentration, it was still extremely strong. So I went and did some further dilutions to try to work out a good percentage level to have it in our record. So what I did was I diluted it down to 0.1%, and 0.001%, so that's a thousandth of a percent. And what I found was that lowest dilution, 0.001%, was actually a pretty reasonable where you still got the smell of geosmin and you notice it, but it's not completely in your face. Another raw material I thought we might be able to use is patchouli, and that's because that's got some earthy components to it, but it's also got some um, kind of heady or top note uh, terpene constituents. So I thought this might cover kind of two bases at once, both the earthy side from the soil and also the uh, more volatile terpene notes. Then, as well as something earthy, I also wanted to find something ozonic. And the closest kind of ozonic smell that I found that I have is something called floralazone. When you smell that, it really does remind me some degree of this kind of ozonic watery smell, almost like if you go and um, pour a glass of water and you smell that watery smell up close. It smells a bit like that and that kind of watery ozone smell. So I took that out as well. Then there's all of the terpenes. So there are a lot of different terpenes. Technically, geosmin is a terpene as well, but I've categorized it more as an earthy scent. But there are a lot of kind of common volatile uh, terpenes you find from plants. And I've got a load of these things like limonene, myrcene, uh, pinene, lindanol, farnesol, terpinoline, uh, geraniol. So I took a selection of some of those. I went through them and smelled them individually and went through and tried to work out which I thought were most evocative of the smell after rain. So I cut out a few, for example, geraniol, which reminds you a little bit more of the smell of roses. Um, that, for example, has quite a lot of its own specific character as opposed to just a more general nature smell. 
So I decided not to use that, but I did choose to use quite a few of these terpenes and the idea behind those was just to get this kind of general, kind of um, maybe slightly green, uh, natural environment background smell to the Accord. Then finally, I also wanted to have something to kind of mimic that uh, traditional petrichor, that kind of rock smell. And part of the way I could do that, I thought, was maybe trying to have something that's a little bit sulfurous. So what I did was look through my molecules to find the ones which had sulfur inside. And I had something called sulfurol, which to me smells a little bit like uh, meat or ham, but I thought we would try it and see what happened. And then I also had dimethyl sulfide, which apparently is responsible for some of the smell of the sea. And it also seems to remind me just a little bit of some of those off notes you get when it rains, especially in the city and there's a kind of more of that concrete uh, rain smell. So I thought we would try those, and I found another thing called Affirmate, and this doesn't actually contain sulfur, but it has a bit of a maybe slightly acrid, slightly sulfurous, a bit of a plasticky kind of smell, and people also use it a lot in marine scents, so I thought maybe we could try out that in the Accord and see if that kind of helped us achieve our smell of rain. So then, that left me essentially with a painter's palette of raw materials to work with. The next step was to go and make my first attempt at the Petrichor Accord. What I really wanted to do at this stage was to get what I thought would be probably the most important components in the Accord and try to balance them at roughly the right level. That doesn't mean at this stage to have them balanced in perfect harmony, but at least have them roughly in the correct order of magnitude so one thing's not massively strong and overpowering or something's not so weak that it's unnoticeable. So here's what I decided to do. I first took the geosmin, and since I found that my 0.001% dilution was the one that seemed kind of reasonable, I thought let's have that as well at 0.001% in the final chord. Then on top of that I wanted to add some of these sulfurous elements, so what I went and did was I smelled them on the scent strip and tried to work out levels that I thought were kind of maybe would be a good first guess, so that's a dimethyl sulfide, the affirmate and the sulfurol. Then, as well as that, we also have the terpenes, so I thought let's just throw in a load of random terpenes, but let's have them quite weak, and that will hopefully mimic the kind of subtle background scent as the rain, because if you go and you smell the rain, what you notice is it's this kind of enveloping, but also very soft and subtle scent, it's not this kind of um, very strong, sharp smell. Um, so what I wanted to do with these terpenes is have them in such kind of low or very trace levels, that it kind of gives maybe that similar effect of being in nature without smelling strongly of any one of them in particular. The thing about these terpenes, however, is that when you smell them in comparison to some of these sulfurous and uh, things and geosmin, you notice that they're just inherently not quite as strong. So the way I dosed these was I had these at 0.1% in this final accord, even though I didn't want you to necessarily notice them as much as some of the other things. When you're going to actually uh, make these dilutions and smell them on the paper strips, what you find is the sulfurous things in Josmin are so, so strong that you have to dilute them down, and even after you've diluted them down a load, they're still kind of in the same realm as, or maybe still stronger than some of these terpenes, definitely stronger than the terpenes at the same dilution. So that's why it may seem a little bit, um, a bit funny that I put the terpenes at a higher level, even though you want to smell them less, it's because they're just naturally a little bit weaker smelling. Then finally, there's that fluoralazone, and that's because I wanted to add that kind of watery ozone effect as well, so I knew that that would be a really key component of the Accord. So then, what does it smell like? Well, when you go and smell this, the first thing I thought was I was actually quite surprised that, not that it smells exactly like the rain, but it definitely uh, smelled in the right kind of region, and definitely having all of these things combined together gave me some kind of illusion that, um, you know, if you really think about like a rainy scene in your head, you can kind of imagine this smell uh, just about fitting. So it doesn't uh, mean at this point that we've got the perfect smell of rain, but it means we've got probably a reasonable first estimate. Now when I went and smelled this, so you can definitely smell that geosmin in there, and you can kind of smell some of that wateriness as well. What I did think with this particularly is that some of the things are a little bit too strong. So what I thought, especially was those sulfurous things that I added, um, that dimethyl sulfide, it just seemed like I guessed maybe a little bit too high because it seemed like that was just a bit overpowering everything. And also that affirmate, I thought, again, that was just a little bit too powerful, so I wanted to reduce it down for the next step. Then there was the sulfurol, and to me, sulfurol has this kind of slightly ham-like or meaty smell. 
and you could definitely notice that in the accord and I felt that it kind of stuck out and it was one component which didn't really quite fit into the rain smell it just kind of it smelled like it was there as an extra thing on the side so I didn't really want that so for the next blend what I decided to do was actually cut out that sulfurol as well I also thought the geosmin could have been a little bit stronger so I decided to boost that up and then I still had a little bit of space left. So I thought, how about I try adding in that patchouli? Because I thought maybe that will help um, those terpenes in the top and that kind of environmental smell smell even more realistic while also adding an extra earthy element. So that's what I did for the second accord. So then for the second version, now I already thought that this was quite a bit of an improvement because I felt like I'd got the kind of sulfurous things down to a much better level. But when I smelled this, I did actually think that the addition of the patchouli didn't quite go as well as I thought. What it actually did was it kind of added the smell of patchouli, which is fairly distinctive on top of the rain. And because you find patchouli in a few perfumes and things like that, to me it brought it more towards a slightly more generic kind of perfume smell or at least it would have to be a very specific rain where you had a region with lots of patchouli. And I felt that that wasn't exactly what I wanted. So again, this was something I decided to cut out in the next iteration. Now here having the Josmin a bit stronger again was quite nice. I thought that went fairly well, but it allowed me to notice a few other things, this version. So one thing was because those sulfurous things were now a bit lower, I really felt that out of all the terpenes that I added, and specifically the beta pinene, which is one of the terpenes I added, and that one smells like kind of um, forest air, I find. It smells just like almost if you went to a pine forest and you had that kind of slightly pine tree aroma. It's basically that smell. I felt like that now was also starting to dominate just a little bit, so I decided I want to make sure we put that down a little bit more in the next trial. And another thing I noticed was now that that geosmin level was a bit higher, I also felt that it needed a bit more of the wateriness uh, brought back into it to match it because at the moment it's smelling a lot like soil but you didn't quite get so much the wet rainy smell. So that's what I decided to do for the third blend. So in that third blend what I did was I reduced the pining to a third of what it was and I took the floralazone, that watery kind of smell, and I doubled it. And honestly this blend was really pretty damn good. So again, I don't think it's the perfect smell of rain by any stretch of the imagination, but it really is quite evocative of it, and especially certain types of rain, uh, maybe if you're in the city, or specifically to me for some reason, this really reminds me of rain kind of pouring down on kind of slate uh, paving stones um, up in the Lake District or something like that, with a lot of kind of verdant lush uh, greenery around it. And yeah, this Accord, honestly, or this version, I was really pretty happy with because the smell of rain, I didn't think I would be able to get this close to, but this actually really kind of does it. It gives you that kind of, that quite strong smelling, at least in this version. This is probably as strong as you'd want to use that geosmin, that soil kind of earthy smell, but that is really quite prominent, but also it's got that wateriness as well. And it just does give you that kind of general ambiance, those kind of like off notes you get, the not so nice smells in the rain, that's probably the dimethyl sulfide, uh, mostly and maybe a bit the affamate. And then you also just get this general kind of um, environment and that's probably mostly of those terpenes as well. So it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but honestly, I was pretty happy with this and how it turned out. It's kind of cool to actually be able to say, almost in a sense, that you've bottled the smell of rain because it really does evoke that and I gave it to uh, my brother to smell and he also agreed that it was a pretty good rendition. Um, so yeah, I was quite happy with how it went. Now, I was also interested um, to see, again, just a few more things and those were what would happen if I put that pining back up because I reduced it to a third and I was wondering did I need to reduce it quite that much? And I also wanted to know what would happen if I added some Cistri Hexanol, this kind of green grassy smell. I was wondering, could that make it smell even more kind of green and verdant? So I did that again in the fourth version of the Accord. And I've got to say that I think it was a little bit of a downgrade. And probably the reason was because I had to reduce that floralazone, so that kind of ozonic watery smell, in order to do these things. And I also felt that actually in this, the pinene was still a little bit too strong. 
and the Cicery Hexanol, even though it gives you that nice green grassy smell, it doesn't really um, fit quite so naturally into the smell of rain as I thought it would. But anyway, I was really quite happy, especially with that third attempt at the Accord. I thought it was pretty good, and that's about it. So if you want to make the smell of rain, um, feel free to go and try that, that formula. I know some of the raw materials are a little bit unusual, especially if you're just beginning in perfumery. It's probably a bit unlikely that you'll have those, but you can at least buy them from uh, perfumery suppliers if you go and look around on the internet. Now, of course, I think that the smell of rain is really a nightmare for a perfumer to try to do. And a big part of that is because there are so many things in the smell of rain that we just don't have available in the kind of perfumer's palette. But that said, I think in the future, especially as we have better tools to maybe analyze the smell of the air directly after the rain, and also um, a better ability in the lab to go and isolate and make some of those different chemicals, I think it will be easier, at least in a lab setting with a lot of technical equipment, to get an even better, an even uh, closer kind of accord or something that mimics the smell of rain. So hopefully we get there um, in not too many years, so that I'm still around to see it, but I think this was a pretty cool experiment. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this and want to see other videos on how to make different accords and perfumery, or even just the basics of how to get started with making perfume and also learning other things about, for example, what equipment to use or even the history behind some of the raw materials, then definitely subscribe to my channel because I release a new video every week about those topics. Now, I'd also be quite interested to hear if you've actually gone and made your own Rain Accord. I'm sure some of you guys watching this channel have attempted it, and that's just because, well, who doesn't love the smell of rain? And I would be interested to know if there's something that I haven't tried, because this was kind of all I could think of um, from the raw materials that I have, but maybe uh, some of you guys had some success with it as well. And again, I would recommend that you actually go and try this Accord if you really do want to recreate the smell of rain yourself. Um, some of those raw materials are a little bit harder to find, but you can definitely go and find them on uh, the kind of websites that sell raw materials for perfumers. Anyway, that's it from me. That's the whole video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.